Hi, I'm Bailey Plachek, Curator of Collections here at Clifford Still Museum, and I am excited to dig into the physicality of Still's art today. So I think that so many of us, when we think of physicality with Still's art, we think of physical presence and their physical size. So many of them are huge and you, know, you can kind of see it here, but these are just small ones and the big ones just dominate completely the space that they inhabit. And I think we also think about the physical nature of his surfaces, right? Some are really rough and craggy, others it's smooth and velvety. And when you look really closely, uh, you can start to see um, how still physically built up his surfaces. So let's take a closer look at some of the tools and processes that still used to physically build up those surfaces. So we're gonna play a little bit today with um, some acrylic paint, which obviously is not what's still used. He used oil um, paint, but this is just uh, a lot easier in this kind of context and at home to play with, less messy, um, dries quicker, easier to experiment with layering. So this is the kind of tool that still used, a, a palette knife. And I'm just going to show kind of the texture um, when you're mixing kind of the movements you would use to play with the paint on a palette as you're kind of trying to get the texture and the um, viscosity that you're hoping for. So uh, let's just get some of this on the canvas and start spreading. It's hard to see this white, but um, I wanna get a ground down here. Okay, let's kind of play with some more color here. So still, I think, um, you know, mixed a lot of his, mixed his own paint um, with that so dry pigment media with um, oil media um, in order to kind of play with texture and thickness. Um, so all of the, this is a little bit different because it's all pre-mixed to paint. But you can kind of just see the types of marks that he would have been making. Um, and imagine this on a large scale with a much larger trowel or paintbrush. He would have to be on a ladder and using his entire arm and body to really get every inch of the canvas. Um, so I'm just going to start mixing some of this white and blue right on the canvas here. Uh, you know, for a lot of stills paint, he would mix on the palette, but there, there are instances where we can see he would layer a, a color wet onto another color, which, you know, obviously you can see that effect here where it's um, mixing the white and the blue. Um, so I really kind of wanted to get into some of the awkwardness and the movements with using a palette knife is a completely different motion than, um, than a brush. You really have to like master your wrist and you can kind of see how to get a form on this side of the canvas. You have to twist and then go back. And if we're, you know, some of his forms are very, where we see the side of a, of a palette knife like that. So you can see kind of one of his jagged form sh taking shape there. But then one of the things that I always am fascinated by with his surfaces is that say he would put an entire ground of blue like this down. Um, then I've often noticed he'd come in and layer a form right over. So like that and then to kind of even confuse the surface and play with spatial depth more come back over with the blue right along the edge to further define and so you have areas where the white is overlapping the blue and areas where the blue is overlapping the white. 
and you, you can never quite tell what he built up first. And he would do this layer after layer after layer. So ultimately, you're getting a surface that is incredibly thick and richly built. A lot of these lifelines, you know, would just be the tip of a very small palette knife like that. And then sometimes I, you can see that he's using the palette knife to scrape. Let's get some. Still love the primary colors, you know, blues and yellows and reds and blacks, and whites and. They're all very saturated. So a lot of these colors are mixing right on the canvas. And um, I said before that I do think, you know, some of that he did, um, but that's one of the most amazing things about so many of his colors is how pure, and, and it's crazy to think that that's oil paint because he, oil paint does take so long to dry. And you can see that in order to get a pure yellow, you really have to layer it thick. The other thing about a palette knife that's so fun is the kind of the scraping and then you get these like little air bubbles and pockets. I do think that the more and more you get comfortable with kind of these movements that it takes with a palette knife, you know, it does feel really awkward at front first and um, at least for me, unnatural um, in comparison to a brush. But the more you do it, it really, there's such a sensuality and it's so fun to just play with the paint itself and like how it, you know, plays with one another, the different colors and the different movements that you have to make with your own body to get the desired effect that I think um, you all should just play with that on your own and see, see what kind of forms come naturally to you and if it's the same kind of forms that's still made or if it's something completely different altogether.